going on fam? All right, halibut fishing. Uh, if you saw my last video, I caught one off an inflatable, which is pretty cool. And uh, I was really excited to get my first halibut uh, actually landed. I I've hooked them before, I've lost them, but I've never actually landed them before. So if you saw my uh, previous video, I actually landed two shorts uh, trolling off of my inflatable. So that's a good sign. Um, I've actually never landed a keeper size one from shore. That's the goal today. I'm on my lunch break. I'm here for about an hour and a half uh, at a local spot. Um, and I'm hoping to actually land one. So, you know, just getting a shorty isn't good enough today. I got to get one. Planes, man. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do that with a very popular uh, halibut jig setup. And that's the uh, dropper loop with the grub tail and swim bait combo. So very simply, I took a uh, you know piece of uh, 20 pound fluoro and tied a dropper loop uh, in the middle of this uh, three foot leader here that I've tied to uh, my 20 pound main. Um, and I've got a dropper loop here. Um, check that out. That's a white Kalen's uh, grub tail. I think about like two inches or so on like a size, I think uh, two odd hook. Um, I read in some comments that the bigger hook, the better for these halibut because they have pretty soft lips. And if you use small hooks, you'll hook on the outside of the lip bone here. But if you use big hooks, um, you'll catch them on the inside of the jaw and that's a more secure hook set. Have you ever seen a halibut up close? Actually, like with their mouths, they're really big. Uh, they're ambush predators, they lie in wait at the bottom. And uh, when they see something that they wanna eat, they swim up really fast and open these pretty big mouths. Their mouths are deceptively uh, big. Uh, when they're closed and they're on the ground, you really can't tell how big their mouths are. So I'm hoping that a keeper size halibut has a big enough mouth where this hook will uh, penetrate the inside of the lip there. So uh, about 14 inches away, maybe 16 inches away, I've got um, a Kiteka swim bait. Uh, I call these Katekos uh, because I heard somebody call it Kiteko and it's kind of stuck in my head. But nonetheless, uh, like a little half ounce jig head with a like I think four or five inch uh, white Kitek swim bait. So I'm going all white today. Uh, it's pretty breezy in the bay. I don't know if the audio is uh, being picked up well or not, but uh, it's the beginning of uh, incoming high tide. We're about two hours away from peak high and the bay is just flowing in. It's, 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 it's scooting. So I'm actually going to position myself about right here because the direction of the current is uh, actually wrapping around a point that's like right over here somewhere. And so a lot of uh, stagnant um, water is like whirlpooling right here. So if there are any bait fish that the, that the halibut are gonna target, they would be stacking and being kind of flushed in this area. Area. And I'm hoping that halibut, maybe even striper, are kind of stacking in this kind of quiet area of the water, um, you know, laying in wait, conserving energy, and ambushing any bait fish that are being swept around the corner here. So, you know, what kind of forage are we talking about? We're talking about, uh, you know, baby shrimp, uh, baby smelt, um, herring, really anything that, that is within striking distance, a halibut or a striper, are, they're going to go after it. So, I'm hoping that, um, you know, this Kitek swim bait will mimic, um, you know, whatever forage a keeper size halibut is going after and a grub tail which is actually i think the one that's going to be hit today if it's going to get hit today because it's in the strike zone of the halibut and it's awful it's also off the bottom of the the muddy bay floor and you know a striper will probably see this and hit this too so gonna give it you know about two hours gonna fan cast up and down uh, the shoreline here and uh, we'll see if we catch anything you know muskies are the fish of 10,000 casts out here in the bay early in the halibut season and the halibut are really like the fish of 1,000 casts so might take a thousand, I don't have time for it. So let's see if we can do it in a hundred. So I'm rocking the uh, Akuma SST Barbie edition here. Uh, great rod, you know, full price is like 10 bucks. And the ladies edition, the pink edition was like discounted to like 20 or $25 at West Marine. And uh, I was like, dude, this is a great rod. Just because it's a different color doesn't mean it's not gonna catch any fish. And uh, you know what? Pink's been pretty cool uh, for me in the past. So why not go with it? And uh, you see the uh, you know, presentation uh, the dropper loop crub tail halibut rig that I talked about earlier, uh, kind of flying in the distance there. So 3000 size reel. This is a pen fierce, uh, two, 3000, 20 pound, uh, super eight slick braid. Let's give it a go and see if I can catch my first, uh, keeper halibut from shore today on my lunch break. First cast. are we talking about here? Holy shoot. 
Oh, this might be a big ass ray. Holy sh Okay. Mm-hmm. Alright, 20 pound test mono. Oh, freaking A. What was that? Oh, shoot. Holy man. Damn. No. I must have snagged. Yeah, you know what? I think I snagged a ray. Ray, big shark. Damn. Light tackle. That's what happens. 20 pound floral leader. Not mono. 20 pound braid. Oh, shoot. Damn. Wonder what I. Yep, there it is. Uni knot. Let's see. Woo! Dang. Okay. All right, let's regroup here. Mm, I must have snagged a ray. Shoot. Dang. Dang. Uh. Alright, well, I'd like to tell myself that was a ray. It could have been a big shark, but basically, you know, I was slow bouncing the bottom. I was in contact with the bottom. It's not very, uh, it's not very deep out here. It's got to be like maybe five to six feet, you know, about 20 to 30 yards off from uh, the shoreline here. And uh, I'm pretty sure I snagged a ray. Um, I don't think a shark or a ray would have gone after a white swim bait. Maybe. I mean, you know, I'm not experienced with going after, you know, sharks and rays with, uh, with swim baits. I, I don't target them uh, with anything other than the natural bait. So squid, shrimp, uh, they really eat anything. But dang, had a uni knot uh, tied to, I think, like a 30 pound test quick clip. Maybe a little too light, uh, but I think it broke right at the uni knot. Um, this is 20 pound fluoro. And uh, I'm pretty good with my knots. I mean, I don't often have lines break right at my knot. So there might have been a, a kink in the fluoro. This actually looks like it was a couple inches above it. So I might have been running this line over rocks. This is a fresh leader. And um, it, it, it snapped with only about maybe like, uh, I don't know, like three or four pounds of pressure on this uh, 3000 size uh, Fierce 2. Uh, I think the Fierce 2 max is out around like 14 pounds, maybe like 12 pounds of, of drag. And uh, whatever was on the line, this is a medium action rod, was uh, giving it um, giving it hell. I definitely, I don't think I could have muscled in uh, whatever was on the end of this line by horse it in. Um, I didn't feel any tail kicks. I didn't feel any undulations. I didn't feel my line bobbing. It was just a direct linear pull. And with that much weight and the fact that I couldn't really turn it um, leads me to believe it was a ray. Something big, something over 10 pounds easily 15 pounds plus um dang yeah these are these are the uh the risks you take when you go light tackle whenever you're targeting something you know that exists in uh in an area known for for bigger species like that uh, if i was targeting rays obviously i would bring my ray tackle out you know some heavier gear 50 pounds 60 pound braid something like that six eight thousand size reels uh, surf rods um but i'm not here for that you know i'm here for for a certain other species so the fortunate thing is he left me enough leader see here's the the callens uh you know grub tail right here and about maybe 14 inches of leader left so i can tie another swim bait at the end and uh burn uh, the next uh, half hour uh, casting th this thing back but man dang uh, don't you hate it when that happens i sure do but you know what that's that's fishing right you never know what you're gonna hit into <clears throat> dang. all right we're winding down here and uh stop at one of the last two spots i'm gonna be casting into and uh one thing about this spot, it smells fishy. I mean, it definitely smells like the bay everywhere I go, uh, but this place smells particularly fishy. Um, maybe that makes sense to the guys that fish, but there's some spots, I mean, it could be like 20 yards down from where you're casting previously. For whatever reason, it literally smells like fish. So maybe that's just a sign that other people are cutting bait here because they know it's a good spot, or I don't know, maybe there's bait balls in the area and. They kind of wash up and the place just smells extra fishy. I don't know, maybe it's just a spidey sense or I've just been in the sun too long. Oh! 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 
Here we go. Here it is. Here we go. Okay, I need a spot to land this. I need a spot to land this. Give him some drag. Give him some drag. Oh. Okay, he's gonna freak out once he. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, it looks like a short. Woohoo! Yes! Yes! Yeah! Ah! Oh, yeah! Alright. Alright, let's not freak out too much here. Woo! Yeah! California halibut. All right, definitely bigger than the ones I was landing on my little raft. There he is. And I'm uh, slipping. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm slipping the uh, my finger underneath his gill plate, not in his gill. So just uh, FYI to, to anyone that cares. But you know what? Uh, he's a short. I don't think he's 22 inches. Um, look at that's the underside of his body there. I'm gonna try to get him in the water as soon as I can here. But uh, yeah, good size, maybe two pounds, something like that, two and a half pounds. Not keeper size, not big size, but for light tackle, always fun. Damn, crushed it like two feet from me. I was retrieving and uh, smoked that uh, Callan's white uh, grub tail. Uh, about 14, 14 to 15 inches off the bottom. Awesome, awesome. I have uh, some hook removers here in my pack. Try to uh, do this as delicately as possible here for this guy. And there's that. Let's give him a measurement real quick. All right, from tip to tip, about 19, 19. Okay, got him unhooked. Hands are wet. Just want to show you uh, the colors of the California halibut. Again, 19 inches, three inches too short to keep. Trying to delicately hold him by his tail and his body so as uh, not to disturb him too much. So thanks for uh, the fight and we'll send you on your way. <sighs> yes. Okay, that was pretty awesome. Now again, I didn't have much time to fish, but I was able to effectively plan when the best bite was and I came prepared. Uh, wasn't prepared for that massive hit there uh, in the middle of the video. Um, pretty sure it was a ray that took all my stuff, but you know, I was going light tackle. And again, uh, light tackle, super fun on uh, the targeted species today, which was halibut. Didn't get a keeper, but I got a decent sized one for this area, uh, 19 inches, three inches short of being a keeper, but from shore, I think that's my PB shore halibut. So again, I came just a few hours before high tide. It's high tide now. And uh, I definitely, definitely took advantage of, um, you know, everything. The, the weather was good. Um, you know, it, it was windy, but it's definitely calmed down now. The currents calmed down now. And I was in an area of water that uh, I thought would be effective and it proved to be effective. Again, I was kind of at the inside of a point and, uh, you know, the water kind of stagnates there. And, you know, if you're an uh, ambush predator, like a striper or a uh, halibut, more, more like a halibut, um, you're not going to be in the current. You're not going to expend all this energy trying to get the bait fish you're gonna be in areas of water that are right next to currents and you're gonna wait for the bait fish to kind of sweep by and that's your opportunity to attack so I took advantage of that today um, so again uh, had a kind of high-low uh, halibut set up here a one dropper loop again this is a I think a three or four inch uh, Kalen scrub tail um, with a size 2 uh, J hook and had a, a little swim bait on the bottom, really acting as a weight. Um, I didn't anticipate the bite to be there because I know the halibut strike zone is about a foot or two above the bottom, something like that, especially for these little guys in murky water, which is what I was fishing. So I went with a white grub tail today because I needed something to uh, stand out in that, in that crazy water. So again, um, super excited uh, that I was able to catch something. Um, you know, I caught two things, uh, didn't get a keeper, but I got something. So, you know, if you're ever in, in doubt of being able to catch one of these guys, hopefully this video helps and hopefully you can get uh, a halibut of your own. Definitely excited I was able to put something on the pink rod. Don't discount the pink. $25 again, Akuma SST, great perch rod. Looking forward to putting more species on it. And uh, yeah, stoked.
Pink Rod, halibut. We'll see you in the next one.